Hello everybody, it's Van Berman here. Welcome back to another video and today I want to talk about Fallout. Um, so not in any great detail, but given the fact that the uh, next gen update has come out for Fallout 4 and we've had the Fallout Amazon TV series as well, which I've watched all of. It's pretty good, not perfect, but pretty good. And yeah, the whole Fallout London thing as well. So some of you may remember that I, I don't want to say promised, but my ambition was to do a Fallout London stream series. I don't know, hadn't decided really, to be honest, what I was going to do with that, but to do something with Fallout London anyway. And that was um, delayed. Yeah, no, it was delayed. Delayed because of the next gen update with it making a load of sweeping changes. So, for example, we've got um, ultra, scre um, ultra screen. Yeah, well, they should call it from now on ultra wide uh, screen resolution. So accommodating displays like um, like the one I have. I don't know what it is. It's like thirty two by nine, I think it is something like that. But yeah, like ultra like ultra wide and the normal normal like widescreen ones as well. Um, which you know does make fundamental changes to the back end in Fallout. Hence the delay for Fallout London. Initially, I was a little bit disappointed, uh, as you would expect, wanting to, having been waiting for it for a long time, but I completely understand Fallout London's team's hesitance to want to release it as their release date was two days before the um, next gen update. Um, one of the things that I found a little, little bit bizarre was that Bethesda and themselves hadn't had any communication whatsoever. Um, and that maybe that's just me being a little bit ignorant, but it seems like there have been other projects on other Bethesda games where there have been some level of interaction between the mod devs and Bethesda themselves. But for whatever reason, that doesn't seem to be the case from uh, the Fallout London team, and they have alluded to the fact that they have reached out previously. So I guess in my mind, I'm just thinking about the Sky Oblivion team. You know, they've clearly had some good interactions with Bethesda. They mentioned it on a number of occasions, whereas it looks like the Fallout London team with Bethesda hadn't. So not sure what necessarily really what, what reason that is. I guess the Sky Oblivion team is more like, yes, we want to recreate Oblivion in Skyrim. <laughs> Therefore, maybe there's more to discuss rather than we want to create a whole unique like Fallout game, but geographically based somewhere else where there's no vaults and that kind of thing. You know, maybe there's not really as much crossover. We're just using your engine type of thing. So there is that to that. Yeah, like I say, came as a bit of a shock to me. And I guess just to cover off a couple of things that I've had discussions with in real uh, discussions I've had with people in real life as well uh, is around a lot of the um, news that's coming out about Fallout London, saying it's been like delayed indefinitely and all this sort of stuff. And the team Fallon, who are the um, mod creators for Fallout London they have sort of hit out a, on it a little bit on Twitter or X whatever you want to call it um, which I have seen and they were basically saying that well it is technically true because the team don't know how long it's going to take to work around um, all the back end changes that Bethesda will have made due to the new update they also it's not like it's canned <laughs> you know there's however many years of work that they've put in and it is going to be released at some point. It just, is it one of those things where, you know, it's going to take a couple of months or it's going to take a year to, you know, rectify all the changes. I think, I guess then they've got to replay test everything as well. So, you know, you potentially start to look at a couple of months unless they're quick fixes and quick play tests. But my guess would be not, that that's not going to be the case. I would maybe expect to see it now in the autumn but that's just pure pure speculation and that's if things go well i would suggest but yes so i just want to clear that point uh, i've also had a number of people sort of <laughs> funnily enough people who don't necessarily really play video games or maybe have a minor interest in playing video games and have seen the fallout tv show and they want to know what fallout game to go in and play and i guess it's been one of those that's a little bit difficult to suggest i suppose like my 
personal preferences, you should stay away from the Brotherhood of Steel game in the first two because they're wildly different to, I guess, what you'd be expecting. A lot more, quote-unquote, hardcore, I suppose. And then you've got someone saying that like Fallout 3 or New Vegas might graphics might be too dated. Not something that I personally think. And I don't think it's true, but maybe there are people out there who may think the same thing. In which case, it's very easy, though, isn't it? You say, well, go and play Fallout 4 then. And I think probably... The best one to recommend, even though it's not the most user-friendly in terms of bringing you into the universe, but it is more aesthetic to the TV show because of the NCR and all that would be New Vegas, I would suggest. And I think New Vegas does a lot of stuff really well that Fallout 3 doesn't do, even though I think Fallout 3 is the more like pure experience for that generation. But... We can disagree. I like them all quite a lot. So um, I'm not really going to complain either way, whatever people choose. But yes, that would be my suggestion if that's something that you're also thinking about yourselves. And obviously you can do survival mode on the new uh, Fallout 4 like I did. (laughs) That was quite a wild ride, that's for certain. So yeah, you've got the opportunity to do stuff like that, which is great. Um, I think that was all the bits I wanted to say, other than I did take a video earlier of my experience in, I'm going to cover my face now, because there's nowhere really else to put it, Uh, my experience of just loading up the new gen, next gen update on the ultra wide screen, and a lot of stuff does work really well, I want to make that point like quite open off the bat, like the scenery and everything works well, the performance is good really good i suppose um stuff like using the pit boy and going onto the the quests and the map and all that sort of stuff is fine because it's all contained within the pit boy on the arm and they've not done anything with that resolution but all the sort of main game ui so your ap your health bars like even your little icons in the bottom corner on loading screens they haven't then um like brought this bit with the power armor that screen out at all but the thing is like oh, they managed to do it with the text boxes in this corner but then all the bits that are like up at the up at the top down here and like especially when you get like your quests come up as well with the um you know where you got the little animated thing and it'll say what quest it is all of that all looks really off really stretched like they didn't create and here as well like they didn't create the right text scaling or font scaling to work with ultra wide and it feels kind of lazy because if you're going to go to all the effort that you've gone to with making it ultra wide compatible which i don't i don't imagine was just as easy as dragging the resolution uh, slider in the um in the back end like why not get your main page ui correct like even the um compass bit at the bottom it's not crisp it's yeah it's all stretched and it's really horrid and quite jarring especially with this text as well like it literally has just been stretched rather than created or scaled it down correctly for ultra wide so they've clearly got some work to do but like stuff that's already that's like built into the game like the pit boy particularly like the terminal here as well all that looks really looks perfectly fine because it's still taking on the same resolution and space as before but i just really wanted to make that that point i've only really played it for about 10 or 15 minutes and i found it i did find that quite jarring i imagine there'll be a fix or someone will release there'll be something on nexus mods right at some point that's going to fix that i would imagine but yeah it just it feels kind of half assed bethesda um and like talk to people who are making your biggest mods to let them know because the like the release date for Fallout 4 would not have a uh, Fallout 4 London sorry would not have escaped the Bethesda team and I really do feel for the Fallout London team Fallout London team for a number of a number of reasons <laughs> one like they've had to delay their release indefinitely which is not great um or until such time obviously until such time as they can rectify it in the new and with the new engine changes they potentially really released it at a really good time because people like me have been really into the fallout series had no real reason to go back other than maybe like a big mod like this coming out 
would have been super stoked for this given the Fallout TV series. And they've sort of missed capitalizing on that chance to get their mod more uh, mainstream uptake, I suppose. Even though obviously they would have still been limited to PC users um, because it's not going to be available for consoles. Mainly, I think, due to the size, because it's about 40 gig. I'm not sure how you would, even if you could put that on console, how you would distribute it. Um, and then, oh, they are the two things, aren't they? Yeah, and then with no like prior warning from Bethesda, even if it was just, you know, by the way, guys, we're working on this. This is the day it's going to release. We're not willing to send you, you know, an update ahead of time, let's say, for whatever reason. But we're going to let you know that you need to delay things because because it's going to make big changes. So, yeah, it feels as though, and I'm jumping through some hoops here, but it feels as though you have the supported mods in Fallout 4, which, uh, you know, the, the Fallout 4 Creation Club, which are paid for, and thereby Bethesda gets a cut of it. And then you've got everyone else, and there seems to be, as you would expect, I guess, Bethesda cherry-picking those over the others. Now, I'm not sure if any of those mods in the Creation Club and all that sort of stuff have taken a hit because of the new update. That would be very funny if it's a paid mod and Bethesda have then broken them. Don't know that that's happened, but one presumes that there's a possibility. So, yeah, it just it seems, seems a bit short-sighted, I guess. Um, you know, I, d I suppose there's no direct commercial advantage or reason for the Bethesda to talk to the to talk to Team Fallon, but people who didn't have Fallout 4 who really like the idea of Fallout London may go and then buy it to mod. Just an idea. I've bought games just purely to mod before in the past. So yeah. And we've also got the other thing as well. Fallout 76, lots of players. Um I'm not gonna be I'm not planning to jump back in. The game felt quite irredeemable when I um when I played it and went back to, and subsequently went back to it there's a lot of fundamental gameplay mechanics that I just don't particularly like in you know in the in the Fallout world and yeah I guess see I think the thing is particularly like, and with the Elder Scrolls online as well I think what what people thought they wanted <laughs> was to be able to play like Skyrim Oblivion whatever it is with their friends not like not have an MMO am I right or not I'm probably not right but for me that's what I thought I wanted um and I think it is a good idea and I think that's why projects like Skyrim together are really good I haven't had chance to try it yet I have seen it in a number of videos on YouTube and it seems to work pretty well for the most part and I think like that's the way to that, that's sort of what we wanted I think anyway yeah that's what I wanted and it is still something that I really do want to try out the Skyrim together. And then if there was a similar thing for Fallout, then that would be, in my humble opinion, um, far more fulfilling than playing Fallout 76. But yes, in any case, please let me know if you've seen... Well, well let me know what your thoughts are, basically. I'm more than happy to, to hear them and happy to share some info on Fallout London as well. Very much looking forward to it. I'm still planning to do something for the channel on it. Of course, it's one of the big game mods that I was planning on looking at this year. So, yeah. Let me know your thoughts on that. Let me know your thoughts on the TV series as well, If you, if you, you, how you enjoyed it, if you didn't enjoy it. Um, I would probably give it like an 8 out of 10, I think, if you want my like brief score. Worth watching, particularly if you like the Fallout games but don't expect it to be a masterpiece in its own right so i think it is better if you have played the games and you understand a bit more of the context around things um but and yeah the acting ranges from like nine out of ten down to like four out of ten so it's it's a little bit broad in that regard so but don't get me wrong like some of the stuff like the set the some of the sets are really 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 well done some of the stuff in the vaults are great the Red Rocket gas station, that kind of thing. Like they were the some of the real highlights in the in the TV show for me. So yeah. Okay, no death claws though. Spoiler, but no death claws, unfortunately. 
maybe we'll see that in season two, which I believe has been confirmed. And yeah, I'll leave it there. So keep your eyes on the skies for Fallout London and mind the gap. <laughs>